as you may know, hydrogen has recently taken a relevant role in the energy landscape. And uh, as of last year, more than 40 countries have developed uh, hydrogen strategies. And uh, from there, the necessity to, to monitor the ways of producing this product and to monitor uh, its usage, of course. And for this reason, uh, the Energy Data Center, together with the European Commission, has developed a data collection template that uh, my colleague, Nicola Cohen, uh, will present now. So, Nicola, over to you. Hello, thank you, Lucia, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. I hope the first day of the pre of presentations was good, uh, good and nice for you, and you learned a few things and and the other presenter were very good. Uh, so today, as which I say, we are going to talk about our first attempt at the IEA to develop a new data collection regarding hydrogen. So we're going to start with a few elements, a uh, few elements on the current trends, current key hydrogen trends. Most are based on the work done by our colleagues in the analyst teams, which is coming from uh, references, I uh, will be giving uh, provided to you later. And uh, also some key concepts on how we establish the methodology for the uh, uh, methodology for the data collections and how the current questionnaire that we have is working. So now first some key hydrogen trends. Um, hydrogen. I don't know why it is jumping, sorry about that. Uh, so hydrogen is regarded as a very important option in the support of climate ambitions because of its nature as a similar to a fossil fuel while we uh, producing only water when, when burned. So that's why it is a key part of many heavily industrialized countries in their path toward net zero emissions to, for 2015 to use, replace the current consumption of fuel with hydrogen. Uh, for, so to follow those net zeros, we have a lot of current pledge and projects that are ongoing and trying to the, to replace and put in place the systems to produce and use this hydrogen. And uh, this induced for us as uh, statisticians the need to find new methodology and new way to account for those for this fuel and how it uh, to how to properly display if those usage are clean or not, are following the objective of net zeros or not. So well, as we can see from uh, the reports of our, from our trade analysts, when all the graphs that you will see in the next slide are coming from the IEA Global Hydrogen Review, the latest edition of 2023, which is done by our trade and it's really, I encourage you to check it if you want, it's for free on the website and you can find a lot of very interesting information in there regarding the current trends, the projects that have been developed, and the nature of te the technologies behind all that. So as I was saying, the demand is already, it's already there for, demand has been, has been there for a long time, has been many, been many use for the production of petrochemicals and some other uses of non-energy uses. But uh, as I said, it is now, plan to be used for new, the different uh, usage. As you can see in the two graph here, you, for now it's mostly spread between refining and industry, so petrochemicals. And by 2013, with the current government's pledge on the road, which will reach to up to 25% of the demand that will be for those new usage and not the traditional one that we have right now. Uh, also, as I was explaining, we have a lot of this technology has been developed everywhere in the world all at once. Each country, each region developing their own ways of building the industries or trying to implement hydrogen into their already existing sectors. So we see variations in the way of working that is really interesting in terms of data but can lead to a lot of difficulties when you try to create things. And it's a, for now, the current uh, uh, productions of hydrogen is still mostly present within the OECD countries. But we will see in the next slide that 
it is changing quite, quite quickly. And also we need to distinguish in the production of hydrogen, the part that is coming from electrolysis, the part that is coming from fossil fuel with carbon capture uh, and utilization, uh, utilization and storage, the CCUS, and uh, the, no, the non clean fossil use of, uh, of, of production for the hydrogen. The electrolysis represents most of the production uh, right now, and for fuel with CCUS is still very low, but it should be uh, coming soon, uh, hopefully using the technology that have been developed. Also, as you can see on the right here, the uh, current uh, projects uh, that are planned by 2023 are most mostly at an early stage of uh, development or during their feasibility study. So they are still not implemented, but they should be useful uh, and hopefully will be uh, developed soon. As I was saying, so we are currently mostly seeing uh, hydrogen-related projects within OECD countries, so Europe, uh, Americas, and Oceania. But in uh, 2023, we have seen ch the Chinese uh, industries developing a lot of pro new projects and reaching uh, which in operational state for several uh, of their industries, which led to this uh, graph as you see on the left, where the current deployment of water electrolyzers is led by China right now. And uh, as for the rest of the clean development, uh, the clean production of hydrogen, the uh, project are for now mostly at the early stage or just as a feasibility uh, study period. So not yet uh, usable for, for the industries. Um, for now, uh, most, uh, again, the repartition right now is mostly within OECD, with the exception of China and India that are uh, leading a lot, and also some of the Arabic uh, oil exportators, such as UAE and Saudi Arabia, which uh, with their photochemical plants are already using uh, several electrolyzers. But in the planned uh, project for 2023, you can see that it's more worldwide spread. And that is very interesting in terms of availability at a regional level to avoid long, long transportation of the fuel in between countries. So uh, this, uh, again, this is another slide just showing the same of the uh, of development as original point. And last one on the uh, trade, as I told you, even if the production seems to be spread and more and more uh, evenly distributed around the world, we, there will still be a need to trade and transport hydrogen across borders for different usage. And right now, this project is still, both projects are still blocked mostly by regulation and infrastructure issues. Hydrogen being extremely volatile and combustible, you need very specific ways of transporting if you keep it as a gas. It can be transported as ammon uh, within ammonia, but it induces more energy consumption to store it within the, with ammonia and you put it out of the ammonia when you receive it. So again, new technology that needs to be uh, developed and needs that do not match um, for now the cost that it will do to do this, uh, those kind of things. So, Investments are still uh, needed in many of those uh, subjects. Now that we've seen quickly the uh, key uh, threads and information on hydrogen, we can go, go now into more of the methodological parts. So, first of all, what do we what do we talk about when we say hydrogen? So, we talk about the gas H two, so two molecules of, uh, of hydrogen, dihydrogen, linked together. It is mostly considered as a derived secondary product from oil or from natural gas. And overall, we'll be using the, to measure it, the terajoules units, which sometimes it's more reported as a volume, but we prefer to use energy direct, commodity directly, so energy units. We also consider here a gas that is pure at 98%, meaning that we are not considering a mix of H2 and some other gases that uh, could be found some in some specific 
with uh, underground resources or during industrial processes. And also, we try to cover intentional production and by production, but covering mostly what's happening in refining activities where you will get some hydrogen as a byproduct of some of the reaction and you will use it in some of the uh, in the rest of the activities. We will try to cover also this in our statistics. We cover energy and non-energy use because as it is an energy community that is becoming more and more observed and scrutinized, it appeared to us that it was more important to try to cover everything and know where the stocks are and who are the big producers and how the technology is developing. Maybe in the future, we'll be only focusing on energy uses, but for now, we, we try to cover everything. And also, we are not doing within the questionnaire distinction between what could be called green or clean hydrogen. We will try to focus on the technology level because the rest will be more politica politically influence and can lead to some issues in the data reporting. So we prefer to focus on the gas as a chemical compound and the so different source of origin being linked to the technology used. And also we are not it we are not covering H2 presence in other compounds with two exceptions that we'll be detailing the detailing later to avoid covering any chemical uh, chemical products that would be partly uh, 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 be partly uh, composed of H2 to level that. So the two exceptions that we are covering are ammonia, as I tell you, told you, it's a traditional product of the hydrogen industries anyway, and can be used as a more stable means of transportation for the gas. For the actually at that stage, it's solid, but then you can reuse it. Uh, and restrict it. And also we are covering within the questionnaire what we call the e-fuels, electrofuels, which are some fuels uh, developed, uh, basically it's, uh, the, it's using technology that are linking a molecule of H2 and a molecule of CO2 and mixing them together to produce various type of liquid or uh, other type of fuels. All those technologies are currently under development, so it is a little bit of a blurry definitions there, but it's more a way for us to cover the current development that are happening in the countries, and then try to see if we are currently covering or not all the technology that has been, have been used. As a last point on this uh, on the product definitions, we are currently working with the CH. Uh, so the system for information uh, about energy on energy commodities to there's a revision project ongoing to try to define precisely within the international recommendations the definitions of both electrofuels of hydrogen and of ammonia so that can be changed maybe in the coming months and years but for now this is what we choose to do with the European Union to try to follow this and then, so that was the product part regarding the flows. There would be, um, for the demand part, they will be quite close to what you will be seeing with the rest of the fuel. So demand in transformations, energy sectors, or the final consumptions will be covering energy use and non-energy use, as I told you. And on the supply part, we will have more flows regarding production because we'll be detailing the sources and the means of production of the hydrogen. So, that will be a little bit more detailed and interpreted with the rest of the annual questionnaires. The production of the produce can, be, can come from various means. So if it's coming from another industry or other energy commodities, that would be natural gas, crude oil or petroleum products, sorry, coal, renewables, and non-renewable waste. So you see here a list of the various reactions that can happen and that could lead to uh, this uh, to the production of uh, hydrogen. And we also cover in, uh, in this, we are focusing on the part of the production that is with carbon capture and without carbon captures and storage. So that we can cover as much as possible in terms of production and methodology. So the hydrogen can be produced from an energy community or it can be produced through electrolysis, which is uh, to simplify it, very 
simplifying here using a, a, one anode and a cathode within water and with a specific membrane within it to separate uh, through with, it, with an electricity, electric current the uh, atoms in the water and to produce in one part H2 and another part some OH and basically separating both and getting the gas there, which is this technology is the most used for the clean part of the hydrogen because it can be directly into clear to clean electricity generations and the means of storage of this uh, renewable electricity. Uh, so, so we will detain in the questionnaire the electricity depending on the source of the electricity. So if it's connected to the global grid of the country or if it's coming from a specific type of fuel. So renewables, nuclear, fossil fuel, or what we put as other just to uh, in case there is some very specific uh, activity that are going in this uh, in, in the plant, but it's not covered by the rest. <clears throat> uh, also, yes, uh, so we specify, as I said, we distinguish what is going to the grid electricity in the rest of the sources, and we consider direct lines uh, in there. We mean that it's not if your plant electrolyzer is connected to the grid and your grid is, is fed by 60% of uh, renewables. That doesn't mean that the, the electrolyzer is 60% renewables. We only consider the direct line, meaning, for example, a solar panel that is directly to a solar plant that is feeding directly the electrolyzer. That's when we'll be considering that. Um, the production for the ammonia and uh, uh, and the rest of the fuel are more uh, traditional. We are just focusing on the quantities produced from the different uh, industries. And we are covering all ammonia produced, either for energy or non-energy purposes, for several reasons. The main being that we consider that for many of the producers, they do not know if the ammonia they produce is destined to be used for energy communities or not, for energy purpose or not. So we prefer to cover everything and try to have as much information as possible. Also, the ammonia being a very interesting resources for other activities than for energy, energy purposes. It could be interesting also to have, uh, day, to have data on this. And for the, uh, the rest of the issues, as it is mostly at the cell development, we are just focusing on the source depending on the uh, first uh, material in the production. Regarding the trade, uh, we are following the same type of methodology as for fossil fuels. So I think we will be seeing this tomorrow, if I remember the agenda correctly. Uh, so we focus on the country of origin and the final destination of the community. We do not focus on the um, intermediate uh, stops on the way between the, during the trade. So most of the hydrogen right now in form of gas is traded through pipeline. So either directly uh, injected into the pipeline or blended with some natural gas. The other transport system include so ammonia, as I told you before, and also methyl cyclohexane, which is by another chemical compound that uh, can be used to transport it. So transforming, uh, I mean, in getting the hydrogen transported by ammonia with methyl cyclohexane will get as it is a chemical reaction, some losses on the way, and those losses will be directly recording within the transformation losses uh, row in our questionnaire, so that we can also assess maybe the efficiency of specific transformation system of the specific ports, whatsoever, to try to follow this. And we see this last line a lot everywhere, uh, as it is a questionnaire that is at his, in his first version and trying to be uh, developed, we really want to try to get the hydrogen uh, to take remark seat and get more qualitative information as, as well as quantitative for users. So we have a remark seat in the questionnaires and we highly encourage everyone to just note everything on the specificity they might have in their countries. Um, within the transformation sector, so hydrogen can be used for many different regions, production of electricity or converting into gas, production of ammonia or e-fuels. You can see here the different type of reaction that you could follow. And also it can be used in the as a refinery uh, in refineries 
to produce uh, different type of fuels and uh, and other products. Uh, so key points now we're gonna get a better look at the questionnaire itself, the one we developed, and see how how it goes. Uh, so it comes it's uh, it's made of six tables. So one the so first on production, then we have the stocks. We have then consumption side with transformation and final consumption sectors. And then we have a table specific on trades and on the cap on infrastructures, so the capacity of production and of storage of the uh, uh, of a country. Uh, yeah, of course, I uh, didn't precise it, but uh, it's we, we are focusing here on one country per year. It's an annual data collection in case it was not uh, obvious before. Um, so this questionnaire will be directly linked with the rest of the five other annual questionnaires that we are using. So for obvious reason, for the reason the production means that in, for example, the coal or the gas annual questionnaire, if they have uh, quantities that are used to produce hydrogen reported there, it will match the quantities we have in the hydrogen questionnaire. And then we have the transformation sectors where we should see also connection between the hydrogen used as input for the petroleum refinery activity and what is reported within the all uh, all questionnaire. The first table you can see, I uh, told you, we are covering the productions to different uh, different technologies to get hydrogen. So that include different type of fuel as, as sources or the different type of electrolysis and the electricity that feed the electrolyzers. And we are also covering the part that are with uh, carbon and capture, capture, capture and storage or without uh, in from it. Uh, just as a reminder here, we work here with gas at 90, hydrogen as a gas at 98% of purity. So turn into account for all of this uh, gas here. And uh, I think that's it. It's mostly everything there. Yeah. Terajoule, and we are working also on net terrific value, uh, on net value here. So I need to just set that as a corner for all of the data for the rest of the questionnaire. And then we have the transformation part, which will be, of course, the most complicated one. The first uh, lines are directly connected to the, uh, the first table, the production one. And then you will have the inputs into the rest of the uh, transformations. Or the uh, uh, and also that would include the quantity that you use of hydrogen to produce ammonia or to produce some other e fuels that you will get here. And as I specified before, we would also get the transformation losses. And we specify here also if you have transformation losses within the refinery, you can also report it here so that it's more clear for, for everyone. And uh, then you have some last lo some losses to not to, to not meet with the rest. We have transformation and distribution losses, but really focusing only on the loss that you might get from the pipeline leak or some quantities of ammonia that will fall from a truck or from so some containers that will cover both parts. Um, the final consumption, uh, that it's really matching what you will see in the rest of the annual questionnaire, and we are covering the energy and non-energy use for both few energy communities. And that will be it right now for what we can present. As I told you, the, um, the questionnaire is at its very first stage. We work on it with the European Union to develop, uh, to develop it. And also, I know that we have a lot of colleagues from China. We worked with the APERC because they were developing their own hydrogen questionnaire. And normally, our methodology are matching with them. So normally, if you fill one questionnaire, it's the methodology should match also ours. So this way, you can you it will should not make too much of a double work for you. And it's available online uh, on our website. So I invite you to go and oh, have a look. Yeah. If you have questions, feel free. And yeah, that would be it for me. Thank you very much.